Okay, so it seems just about time. Hello, everyone. Welcome to our Horizon Weekly Insider number 24. Uh, happy Thursday. Very, very excited to be here today as usual. Please remember to the new uh, people joining us today that this call is going to be recorded and it's going to be available in our Horizon podcast as well as in our YouTube channel so you can review the information later as well. And also remember to ask your questions on Menti while this call is happening so we can have a, a good Q&A session at the end. So let's just start with that first department that will be engineering. Luca, if you would like to please start. Hi, Angie. Thank you. Uh, just troubleshooting a little bit on my side. Uh, thank you and happy to see uh, new users taking part to the Weekly Insider in real time. Today we start with uh, Alberto, so I'm passing the ball to him. Thanks, Luca. Okay. Uh, regarding uh, uh, the new paper uh, on the sidechain model extension, uh, technical review uh, has been finished at the beginning of this week, and currently we are porting the paper to LaTeX, to the LaTeX version. So, and this is going to take up to tomorrow. So, publication can be expected uh, to happen even before uh, original schedule. And in parallel with the paper, uh, we already started working on the implementation of the extended model. And in particular, in the last weeks, we have been focusing on the introduction of uh, the proper elliptic curves, primitives, and, and the SNARK gadgets that are needed by the extended model. Uh, for example, just to... We're working on uh, on Poseidon Ash implementation for our cures that we're going to introduce, uh, but also with focusing uh, with the focus on uh, possible ways for optimizing the performance of the of the primitive of the hash primitive, but also uh, let me say uh, keeping in mind the possible uh, optimization of about the number of constraints to verify it in a circuit. Our plan is to make uh, this uh, uh, library, the library uh, uh, containing uh, uh, all these uh, parts that are related to the extended model that is, uh, uh, let me say, snark-centric, centric, let, let me say, um, is to publish these, uh, uh, these implementation uh, in the, in also in the next weeks. OK. Uh, Regarding, uh, um, instead of the introduction of uh, uh, sidechain support in mainchain, uh, we did another, in the last days, we did another round of code review of the new changes. Uh, but uh, and we agreed on some modifications uh, uh, in the sidechain structures that are responsible to keep track of sidechain related info. And uh, um, such changes are currently in progress. And always related to, to main chain, uh, the pull request uh, regarding the features that are going to be released in the next uh, um, in the next uh, release uh, have been reviewed. Two of them uh, have been already uh, approved, but and two remain and the two remaining are uh, requiring some additional uh, changes uh, that are currently in progress. Okay, uh, the last thing is uh, uh, regarding the SDK. Uh, and this week, uh, we proceeded with the intermediate code review uh, of um, of the following uh, Ouroboros related changes that are uh, node view holder, uh, introduction of uh, uh, forger related boxes for stake delegation, and the transactions that allows you to do it. Moreover, uh, uh, the changes to history are uh, are still in progress, and uh, we are proceeding. Uh, uh, also writing uh, uh, unit tests. Uh, last thing, uh, we started also uh, regarding always the SDK, update the state uh, to support robust logic. And beside, besides consensus part, uh, we're also working on uh, sidechain test framework updates and uh, uh, VRF wrappers 
creation. So because we are going to have the VRF implementation that uh, is not going to be in Java, and so we will have, or in Scala, and we are going to have a wrapper, and, uh, and we are going to call it via JNI. Also because the VRF is going is, is going to be used also for the sidechain extended model on, on in uh, in the Rust library that is going to be published soon. Okay. And uh, that's everything. Thank you, Alberto. Very excited by the paper coming uh, even sooner than expected, and also the implementation uh, of the model, extended model that started already. Uh, I'll continue just to say that uh, uh, the pull request you were mentioning being approved and uh, being worked on with the additional changes required will also be the content of our next uh, two. 0.20 Zendi release, which is coming to. Uh, in fact, the current Zendi is deprecating on the 25th of February, as usual, since we use a deprecation cycle. And so we are introducing a new software version. And uh, the PM team, in collaboration with the marketing team, is refining the text for the communications to all our stakeholders. We will use it for our blog, uh, social media channels, and also our emails to all our partners and exchanges. Then about the Explorer and the wallet, wallet updates, we are uh, recording a good progress, in particular with Sphere by Ryzen. We are expecting to have another build tomorrow that uh, will include uh, some, of, um, some other uh, fixes and improvements on which we are working on, for instance, related to the batch withdrawal functionality. And if tests will show no regressions, we are going to pack all these, plus the previous fixes that we did in the last month, in a release to be published very soon. Let's say by the end of January and the beginning of February, the latest. Any feedback from the community will be welcome, of course. And that's it for now. Thank you, and back to Angelica. Thank you, Luke and Alberto. Now we have some updates from the Node side with Alan. Thank you, Angie. Uh, just a quick update. We've got over 33,000 secure nodes, and it seems that we keep adding some every day. So right now I'm focusing on some optimizations, and those are around um, batching queries on the back end for the database so that we can get a little bit more out of our servers. And we'll be continuing to work on that for the uh, probably the next week or two for those optimizations. Back to you, Angie. Thank you, Alan. Now we have the updates from UX with Gustavo. Hey, everyone. So we'll start with the help desk update brought by Spencer. Uh, good day, everyone. Uh, going to be a quick update from the help desk. Uh, the metrics are posted in the text channel uh, primarily. And as usual, uh, Fawcett is generating more tickets than anything else. Uh, certainly over 80% of the tickets to, on the help desk are generated by the faucets. Other items primarily support for apps such as Fear by Horizon as well as Node Setup. I uh, would like to point out that we do have a <coughs> uh, user satisfaction rating, uh, actually somewhat disappointing this month, uh, slip, or this week, uh, slipped down to 3.5 out of possible 5. Uh, We'll be looking to work on that for the next uh, stand-up. Thank you very much. Thanks, Spencer. So, as uh, Luca pointed out, one of the items that we've been working is the Sphere, Sphere by Horizon testing. So, we've been supporting uh, Paolo on the engineering team. And the other item that we are working on is on the faucet referral system and how we identify and we deal with abuse on the referral system. It's not an exciting feature, but it needs to, to be worked on. And it's all on our part. Thank you, guys. Hey, guys, sorry to interrupt. Uh, Spencer, can, can we go back to the, the drop-in and rating? So what's the main driver for that? Um, I would say it varies because we will get um, one-star ratings occasionally from people who are unhappy that they may be in an area which is has sparse IP addresses and so necessarily uh, when they try to claim there will be someone else with an identical IP address and they've claimed ahead of them. There's simply at this point nothing we can really do about that and uh, that generally um, 
elicits a negative uh, a negative response. That's that probably is. that's 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 probably one of the primary drivers. Also, um, uh, Stoic Nate's been doing a great job uh, rooting out uh, multiple accounts, and uh, they rarely uh, leave complimentary messages. <laughs> Obviously, okay, cool. I, I figured it was something like that. Thank you. Okay. Awesome. Thank you, guys. Now we have Lucy with the marketing updates. Hello, everyone. Um, so updates uh, for the two giveaways that we are currently running. Uh, the first one is our social media milestone giveaway. Uh, we are giving a mystery box of uh, Horizon Sweat to three winners. Uh, so currently we have received over 4,200 entrants already. And then there are only two days left to join the giveaway. Uh, we will announce the winners in Saturday. So if uh, you still have two days to join, you know, if, if you if not yet. The other giveaway is to uh, uh, get an, a, an exclusive sidechain t-shirt uh, by watching one of our videos on YouTube and an answer question. So the winner of last week's giveaway is from uh, is Victor from Nigeria. Congratulations, Victor. Uh, and, and be, you know, be on lookout for a gift pack from Horizon. So we will announce this week's winner tomorrow. So if you haven't uh, participated, uh, you still have today to join for a chance to win. So the good news is this is an ongoing giveaway. Uh, we do weekly. So make sure you follow us on social media in order to get notified. Uh, and also on YouTube, we published our first vlog uh, this past Monday. Uh, and then in the, in, in the video, uh, Luca take us to uh, uh, visit our engineering team in Milan, uh, in Italy where we get a, uh, a look into a, a typical workday of, of uh, some of our engineers working on our products like Sophia and Sidechain. Uh, in this video, we even get a sneak peek of our upcoming new white paper. So, you know, if, if you haven't seen the video, I'll strongly recommend that you, know, you head to, to our YouTube channel to check out after this weekly insider. Uh, we will be publishing more vlo uh, vlogs uh, that capture some uh, behind the scenes, Horizon team. So if you would like to see a very different side of the project uh, and get to know the faces you know, of, of the team behind Horizon, uh, be sure to su uh, subscribe uh, to uh, Horizon uh, on YouTube and, and stay tuned for more videos. And then also we, uh, we have just released a new design for the uh, mining pool page on horizon.global. So other than the new design, uh, the list of the mining pools is also uh, updated. So we, uh, we, we are continuously working uh, on uh, improvements and updates for other pages uh, too, uh, and we'll release them as soon as they are complete. So, uh, and lastly, we are preparing for our first live stream quarterly, uh, quarterly review next week, uh, next Wednesday. So we'll be working on that and make sure that you are, you know, already marked out on your calendar and you don't definitely don't want to miss that one out. That's it from me. Thank you. Hey, uh, can you hear me okay? Yes. Okay, awesome. So on the growth side, we're seeing really awesome uh, growth on the FCAS score. So our FCAS score has continued to increase from um, December 20th when we were seeing a little bit of a dip. And it's just, uh, it's, it's at 863 right now. So in comparison to other projects, Zen is already based on FCAS uh, has surpassed Ripple mm -hmm. XRP in our user activity, which is great. And user activity is calculated uh, based on user operated wallets, engaging in intended use cases, and uh, a whole bunch of other uh, really in-depth metrics by FCAS. So they're doing a really great job. So our next goal is to surpass Ethereum in terms of user activity. And um, my guess is we should probably be there um, hopefully within the next uh, six months. So really happy about that. Also want to remind everybody that we have 11 hours left for the community giveaway. If you'd like to enter, uh, head to getzen.cash and you'll see a banner for the giveaway. So far, we've had 120,000 entries into the giveaway. So when I launched this giveaway, I really wasn't expecting anything close to this. So I had it set as uh, a three month long giveaway. 
And we've had to reduce the duration because the response has just been out, outrageous. So for the next giveaway, which we'll have in February, we're thinking of maybe even reducing the duration further. Um, also, uh, we have just started to promote our Horizon Medium. And let me take a quick look. Uh, when we started the promotion about three days ago, we had 57 followers. <laughs> we had 57 followers on our uh, Medium account. Today, I'm glad to say we've surpassed 1,000 followers in just three days. So from 57 to 1.1 K. So very happy about that. And uh, what we're doing or what Erica is doing is taking snippets from the Academy content and putting it on our Medium content every uh, two days. So within the next couple of weeks, we should have snippets of all Academy content on Medium, which will be a great driver of traffic back to our Academy. And lastly, um, regarding the faucet, we've been having some feedback that people from some countries can't log in using their LinkedIn accounts. So one of the things that we have planned in the next couple of weeks is to add alternative methods of authentication. So right now we have Facebook, Twitter, and LinkedIn. Ideally, we would have about six different options so that if uh, Facebook or Twitter, for example, doesn't work, you could still get your multipliers and do that uh, by authenticating maybe Amazon or Google or something like that so that everybody has a fair chance. So keep an eye on that. Uh, we'll have to start working on that after the Tet holiday because a lot of uh, developers are on vacation for the next uh, week and a half. And that's it for me. Thanks. Thank you, Lucy and Jonathan. Amazing news. Now we have Dean with some updates from the legal side. Hey, everybody. Good afternoon. I uh, just wanted to give a little feedback. Um, yesterday, we had a Zen Blockchain Foundation board meeting that I thought went very well. So thank you to all of the team members who put that deck together. Uh, Rob presented it to the board and, as expected, did an amazing job. Um, and I would say that the, the meeting went very well and our, uh, our directors were engaged and interested and uh, active in participating in the governance of our foundation. And that's all I wanted to share. Thanks everyone. Thank you, Dean. Now we have Rosario with Product and Engineering. Hi everyone, I'm really excited to hear all the, all the updates. I'm happy to announce that we've contracted with a third party to conduct a code audit and uh, they are starting today, actually. Uh, the company is CoinSpec, and they, they have vast experience with our code, uh, code base. Uh, they'll be focusing on the deltas uh, that we have with the Zcash code base, uh, specifically the, our replay protection, fork manager, TLS implementation, our delayed block uh, broadcasting penalty code, uh, most commonly known as uh, the 51% attack mitigation RPC mesh method, uh, and they'll have an initial look at the, the sapling sprout uh, growth 16 implementation as well. On another note, uh, we've completed the 2020 uh, roadmap. And Lucy, when is that going to be published on the website? So whenever our de uh, developers back from uh, vacation. Oh, OK. Yes, OK. Yes, uh, so we will have that published actually uh, during our live stream on the 29th of uh, January. And that, that is our quarterly live stream that will present uh, the entire, uh, will give more insight and details into our uh, quarterly activities. And uh, just to give everyone a, a insight of the 2020 roadmap for Horizon, uh, it, it's to bring side chains to production. So what does that mean? We have a beta that is slated to be uh, released for testing uh, in the first quarter of 2020. Uh, we will uh, likely have an incentivized campaign to get our um, testers to uh, test the sidechain beta. And uh, hopefully that will inform our our uh, engineering team, and uh, there's going to be a fine fix cycle. And they're going to be adding additional uh, additional um, features and uh, from our expanded model that Alberto had just mentioned, and uh, that will take us 
all the way through the fourth quarter. And those are that's the the heavy hitters for the fourth quarter. And of course, there are additional uh, details that will be uh, posted very soon. Uh, that's it for now. Thank you, guys. Thank you, Rosario. Uh, Rolf, would you like to add any updates or comments? Yeah, I would. Um, had the opportunity last night to go to a, a local uh, cryptocurrency meetup and then this morning to go to a business networking event. And as well as I think I prepare for these types of events, um, I always find myself getting into conversations trying to explain the differentiation of Horizon, what the si significance of side chains are, and comparing to other cryptocurrencies so people can figure out what we're doing. Um, and I'm glad about that because uh, I, I don't always explain myself as well as I can be, uh, can do when I go to these uh, different things, and uh, especially if it's been a long day. So I encourage every single one of you that's on a team, that, that's on the team, or wants to tell people about Horizon to actually get out and engage in the conversations a few times a week, and then think about it afterwards, uh, how, you exp how you can explain things better and more simply, especially to people that are new to cryptocurrency. It's difficult work, but after a month or two of doing this, you'll really be able, you'll find you can really explain things in a very straightforward manner. So uh, thanks, that's all I got. Thank you, Rolf. And now we have Rob for the final part. Thank you, Angie. And uh, guys, I, I apologize. My, my thoughts here may be a little bit disorganized. I, I tried to put them in, in kind of a coherent order. Um, so the first thing, I'll, I'll just piggyback on what Dean said uh, about yesterday we, we conducted our first official um, uh, board of directors uh, meeting. So basically, I, I walked our board that formed towards the tail end of last year. I mean, prior to that, we had an, uh, a, officially a board, but we had never really done anything with it, which, you know, it is fine for an org that just kind of bootstrapped from scratch and, and Rolf and I. Um, you know, we're, we're leading that, but now we've added at the town of last year, a couple of other, uh, very prestigious board members, uh, people that have very, uh, strong uh, careers elsewhere in, in some areas that add significant value to us as an organization. But importantly, this is all about governance stability. So in this industry, we throw around the term governance, uh, quite a bit, and oftentimes we do it in ways where they are a little bit naive. So governance doesn't have to be a very elaborate uh, you know, game theoretic voting system. Uh, of that, of course, we're we're exploring and we're intent on implementing. But governance, probably sixty to eighty percent of of governance stability starts with just having sound um, organizational governance. And right now, the Zen Blockchain Foundation is at the heart of the Horizon ecosystem. Now, we are bringing on other entities, very important entities, into our ecosystem, from uh, academic institutions to commercial entities like Horizon Labs. But at the core of it, what bootstraps this ecosystem is the Zen Blockchain Foundation. So the first thing that we really need to do is make sure that the foundation itself is well governed. Uh, so that's what this was all about. So we, we kicked off our first formal board meeting yesterday. Uh, I took the board through uh, what we did in 2019. So we, we did a, a, a big, big overview of everything that happened. We reviewed the, from the first quarter and walked all the way through the fourth quarter. Then we talked about what's going on in 2020, what we plan to do. We got into financials. We reviewed financials for 2019. We did some forward-looking financials, uh, which are looking much better, by the way. And um, and, and then we, we got into uh, legal matters, you know, just typical board matters. But the whole point of this is we are maturing as an organization, and I want to be on, on at the vanguard of this industry maturing. Um, so that's exactly what we're doing. So we're going to make sure that the foundation itself is very well governed. That our finances actually make sense. Um, now you guys know probably one of the big themes, and at least the financial part of that discussion was we we've just exited. Knock on wood, we've exited a two-year bear market, and our revenue stream, just denominated in Zen, was ridiculously volatile. And it was interesting reviewing all of the accomplishments that we did in 2019, and then right after that, saying, "Well, hey, look." Look at the the value of Zen fluctuated down. I think almost ninety percent at, at from peak to trough. And you know the thing is, imagine trying to run an organization where you have to actually program in uh, resources to projects to try to actually accomplish things. But while we still did accomplish a ridiculous amount of things on in a ridiculously volatile budget. So that was, I think, a huge win. Just the message there of what we've done. But twenty twenty 
is shaping up to really be our year, especially as the projects that we've launched in 2019 are really maturing and getting to the point where uh, they're attracting significant players into our ecosystem to actually use the technology. So that was that. Uh, really happy with how it went. Uh, Ralph and I, uh, you know, have been on from from where we started this project uh, years ago to where we are now. I have to say it is humbling, and I'm so happy that we have grown well beyond just our simple ideas of governance uh, to something much more mature. Okay, so let's let's. Uh, I've got a bunch to go through here. I don't want to take up too much time. Uh, we are wrapping up the, well, I guess the 2020 roadmap is is done. We just need to publish it. So Rosario and Lucy mentioned that. Uh, forthcoming, stay tuned. It's very exciting. Um, probably won't be too much of a surprise, but there will be some items on there that uh, will have high impact, and maybe you aren't thinking about them. Um, Lucy will be pre presenting our refined vision and mission statements. So these are things that uh, clearly specify what we're all about. Uh, the vision has to be motivating, it has to be grandiose in some sense, and it has to be emotional. This is a project of human beings. As much as we love and talk about technology all the time because we're building some fantastic technology, ultimately we have to connect at the human level. Uh, so speaking of that, I absolutely loved the, the Milan video, the, the behind the scenes look at the Milan team working there. Uh, that was awesome. Um, and Alberto, we got a little bit of a sneak peek. Some people. Uh, you, you'll probably be surprised by how much people pay attention. Some people were screenshotting uh, your screen and actually looking at what you were reading. So that was kind of fun talking about that on Telegram. Um, and like, so also like Alberto mentioned, we will be releasing the extended model white paper very soon. So it's at least um, exiting the peer review process. We're getting the, the LaTeX version of it. So that will be published shortly. And uh, so a quick recap on this, guys. The alpha and beta systems or sidechain systems, the alpha that you know about that was published in October and the beta that we're, we're going to be delivering this quarter, uh, they are in and of themselves or, or that model is, is a breakthrough. It's the first truly decentralized sidechain system, and that's fantastic. There's enormous um, applications in the business domain and the application development domain, uh, you name it. The extended model, what you're going to see published here in this paper, takes it to a whole new level, and I can't wait to go into the details with the public. Um, so please stay tuned. Uh, let's get a little FOMO about that, guys. It's actually a fantastic model um, that will, will be, in its own way, very groundbreaking. Uh, okay, so a quick note also before I, before I move on from the development stuff. So our FCAS developer score has been uh, sliding down or gliding down. Uh, which doesn't make sense. So guys, we need to look into this. Uh, I'm not sure who's the proper POC for that, whether it's uh, Chronic, Rosario, uh, or someone from, from Alberta, your team. But our engineering activity has never been higher, so there, there's some disconnect. We just need to figure out what it is. Uh, something's not being picked up because our score should be skyrocketing. Um, let's see what else. So I'm personally, I'm traveling, guys, for the next, uh, this week and all of next week. Uh, so I'm doing a little bit of a, a roadshow to raise awareness for uh, for what we're doing as a project uh, with and hopefully enrolling new key partners into our ecosystem. More, more coming on that. At, right now, I'm in Los Angeles for the duration of this week. Then I'm going to be hitting Chicago and New York next week. Um, before I left, though, uh, Dean, Dean uh, Rowan, Aldo, and I, and Rosario met the CEO of our invoicing partner from Mexico, uh, the very large company that we're working with there on two levels. So one project is a Horizon Labs project where, where Horizon Labs is working with the, the invoicing company as a design partner for an invoice registry and that could potentially lead into a factoring marketplace for a very large volume of invoicing in Mexico. The other was uh, something related to the, the Horizon ecosystem more broadly. And this was brainstorming new products like what we've been talking about with Horizon Price Stable Assets. So the company is extremely interested in um, in, in potentially deploying or acting as a distribution channel to plug things like a Z peso or a Z, Z dollar, for instance, if we could actually come out with these products, um, like, like we're starting to think about. And of course, these are, these are things that we're just even starting to talk about now. So of course we need to go through a much more uh, rigorous, uh, you know, thought process here, especially architecting such a system. So we're, we're not we're not there yet, but it's amazing to have a distribution partner like we do. And guys, the way that I view Horizon from a business perspective is is everything we're building here is really one huge distribution channel 
and we have a set of products. So right now our product is Zen, but I want to extend that product line. Of course, the, the sidechain SDK will be another product, uh, and then there will be a whole other suite of products. And we have this huge community that we're growing here. There will be that, that channel to plug it into, especially with major partners like the Inboxing Company. I also met with the risk and compliance uh, team from one of the largest Central American banking and financial groups uh, yesterday with Dean and Aldo. It was uh, just an introductory call to explore some potential opportunities. So they are looking to be uh, forward looking in their industry uh, or now in their marketplace. No one's looking into blockchain. Now, not only are they a major financial conglomerate, but they also have uh, other subsidiaries and major partners in agriculture, supply chain, logistics, and so forth, uh, areas which blockchain could be extremely valuable. And, uh, you know, we'll see more to come on that, but it's just nice to get out there and actually be talking to the right people. And let's see what else. So that, that's about it, guys. So I'm on the road this week and next week with Liat. Um, Liat's bringing, uh, you know, Liat from Horizon Labs is bringing a tremendous experience in venture capital in her past. And also we're just meeting up with some of her, um, her network, her entrepreneurial network as well. And just very excited for this coming week. Any questions, guys? What do we have coming through on Menti? Rob, can I just jump in uh, one sec? There was one thing I meant, I meant to mention. Please. Uh, so next week I'll be uh, in Washington, D.C. at a conference, The Future of Money Governance and the Law. This is uh, uh, GBA uh, Global, so Global Block. Uh, government blockchain association event uh and going to that because we work with carlos toriello in guatemala to uh use the horizon uh blockchain to assist in documenta- documenting the guatemala election with their organization fiscal digital and carlos is going to be uh presenting there uh, and he asked me to be there to uh talk with folks on how uh, Horizon did that uh, documentation. So if anyone is uh, in Washington, D.C., uh, you can check out the conference. Uh, if you wanted to attend, be happy to talk to you there. And uh, I got to say, all that documentation that we did, the work was done by P. Stu. Um, beautiful amount of work of digitizing uh, documents and recording the um, information on the Horizon blockchain. So thank you. Thank you, Rob. Uh, so we have questions uh, today. So the first question is, are there any DApps or projects that are already on Horizon or being built right now? Mm, that, that's, it's a, a great question. It's a hard question. The real answer, I, I would say, is not really. I mean, we have our, our native uh, you know, product, <laughs> cryptocurrency product, and then we have a um, you know, messaging protocol that we, we built in there. But I mean, when you think about the D app world from, say, like an Ethereum, uh, we, we don't have something like, say, like a, a decentralized peer-to-peer lending platform yet, um, or, or other types of D apps. So we don't have those things yet. And the the reality is, let me just quickly walk you through where we've come from, what we are. Um, so we talk about ourselves as a platform. The reality is, our platform is is a platform because of side chains or side chain technology. That's our path to platform. We chose not to go the say like, like a, a counter example would be the Ethereum route where you build a, a script, a, a more mature scripting language into your core protocol. And then you start doing those types of uh, apps in, your, in the core protocol. We chose not to do that. Our architectural path is, is the side chain path. And that's where we're really opening up to, to more of the applications. Um, that said, if there's anyone else who could think of something that maybe I'm, I'm leaving out, please correct me. So that said, things are actually in works, though. So uh, we're we're now looking at a major or proofs of concept with major uh, businesses using the the side chain system. Thank you, Rob. Well, I think once we have our side chain beta, a lot uh, developers' business can deploy side chains on Horizon. Absolutely. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So the ne- next question is: so who are on the yet? Oh, I'm sorry. I, I uh, it broke up for me, Lucy. What, can you repeat that? Who are on the board of ZBF? Ah, okay. So you've got Rolf and I. Uh, so Rolf and I are on the board. Uh, you have uh, Dr. Jimmy Lenz is on the board as well. He comes from the financial industry, but on the disruptive side of the financial industry. Uh, and then you've got David Mercivelli. 
Uh, I probably botched your, your last name there, David. I could never pronounce it properly. Please don't hate me. Um, but David uh, is a medical doctor and also the chief uh, medical officer for a biotech startup. So David was added to the board not only for his uh, you know technical expertise in, in medicine and potential applications for technology in that domain, but also because he was an amazing team member. So David was also our uh, regional lead for our regional manager for the CIS market. So the former, basically the former Soviet Union Eastern European markets. Uh, a couple of years ago, and he just performed so fantastically and just built such a rapport with the team and community that we wanted him back, uh, but we couldn't get him back full time, obviously, because he has a very, uh, very good career elsewhere, but we were able to snag him back onto our board. So right now you're looking at the four of us on the board. Um, so it's a small board. It's intimate. We, we all know each other and everyone uh, a particular, very strong skill set from a different area. And, and I think that's that's great for now. Thank you. The last question is, what is the role of Horizon Labs? Okay, uh, great question. So Horizon Labs is the, the uh, com considered a companion company. So it's the commercializing entity for what we're doing here in the foundation. Uh, what it's doing is, it, it, so rather than us, uh, if you guys remember the movie Field of Dreams, where if you build it, they will come type of mentality, where you build a baseball field and the players will just come and start playing in it. Uh, we don't want to take that route. So we are we love the technology and we, we love the ecosystem that we're building, but we, we want to be proactive. So we launched a company called uh, Horizon Labs in uh, last year, or or uh, and um, the company is really just meant to commercialize the technology we're building here. So it's actually going out to the marketplace and um, aggressively finding design partners to be some of the first users of the technology. It was Horizon Labs that uh, is working with, um, say, Interfactura as an example, the large invoicing company, to build the invoicing uh, invoice registry uh, sidechain. They could then potentially go into an invoicing uh, or factoring marketplace. So it, it's that type of thing that Horizon Labs do. Now, its product is very complementary to what's going on here because the product is uh, a, a software developer kit uh, platform it's going to make it very easy for anyone, whether you're an application developer, uh, you're a hobbyist, you're a student, or you're a business that wants to launch a blockchain to do something, uh, you know, say function specific or to experiment with, that the tool that Horizon Labs is building is really designed to make that an easy process. The goal is so that IT teams that have no blockchain experience at all could deploy this in a meaningful way uh, for businesses. Thank you so much, Rob. Uh, those are the top three questions of the day and we will be posting uh, the other questions in the chat. And one last thing, uh, this weekend is uh, Lunar New Year. Uh, it's year red uh, and also some of our team members are uh, uh, celebrating the uh, um, uh, this holiday and uh, uh, taking a, uh, a vacation. Uh, so just want to wish people who celebrate this holiday as well a uh, happy new year. That's it for me. Back to you, Angie. Awesome. Thank you, everyone, for being here. Having a, uh, We had a great week insider. Hope to see you soon. Have a great Thursday. Bye. Bye, guys. Bye, guys. Thank you. Ciao. Bye. Bye. Bye, guys. Have a nice day. <laughs>